Welcome back to the next session of design of pre-stressed concrete element scores. From the last session, we were discussing regarding module number three, that is design of section for flexion. So in that, we have been covered the 3.1, that is analysis of members at ultimate strength. From the last session, we have been started with preliminary and final design for type one members. So in the last session, I have been discussed what are all the steps you come across in preliminary and final design for type one members. So with these design aspects, so let me go ahead with the problem or let me work out in this particular design context. Okay, so let me move to the problem. Okay, fine. So this is the problem I'm going to discuss in this particular session. So let me take a problem. So now, so based upon the concepts, okay, whatever have been our aspects have been discussed regarding uh, preliminary and final design, especially for type one members. So based on those design aspects, which have been covered in the last session. So on that context, uh, let us start with the problem. So the problem says like this, design is simply supported type one pre-stressed beam with total moment 430, MT means total moment 435 kilo Newton meter. The total moment indicates including an estimated moment due to cell fate of 55 kilo Newton meter. Next, the height of the beam is restricted to, that means the depth of the beam. Height means the depth of the beam is restricted to 920. Next, the very important things, the pre-stress at transfer, pre-stress at transfer, which is indicated by FPO, which is 1035 Newton per millimeter square. Next, pre-stress at service, that is, FPE, which is equal to 860 Newton per millimeter square. So based on the grade of a concrete, the allowable, so next, the allowable compressive stresses are 12.5 Newton per millimeter square at transfer and 11 Newton per millimeter square at service. Okay, so next, the properties of the pre-stressing strands are given below. Okay, so they are given the properties of the strands. So already been defined, what is the meaning of strands? The strands means, that is the combination of, that means when the three numbers, five numbers or seven numbers of wires are joined together to form a strand. Okay, so in this particular, they have been given seven wire strand. That means the seven number of wires are joined to form a strand. And each wire, Okay, will be 12.8 mm diameter with a nominal area of 99.3 millimeter square. So this is the data regarding the pre-stressing strand. And this is the data regarding the, okay, the stresses and all those things. Okay, so this is the data they have been given. Okay, so now before going to the design, so let me go to the previously thing, okay, whatever aspects have been discussed. So in comparing to that, okay, I will proceed so that you will be more familiar. Okay, so what exactly have been discussed in the last session. So based on those steps, okay, step by step, let us go ahead. Okay, so you can see here, okay, in the last step, okay, I've been discussed. The following quantities will be known. Okay, that is moment due to cell weight, they have been given, okay. Amount of pre-stressing still not been given, effective pre-stress not been given, eccentricity not been given. Okay, so moment due to dead load that will be given. Okay, so based on this data, let us work out. So how to go ahead with the problem. So the first thing it says that select the material properties FCK and FPK. That means the characteristic compressive strength of concrete and characteristic tensile strength of a steel wherever it requires. Fine. Next, determine the total depth of the beam. 
So in this particular problem, they have been given the total depth of the beam. That means the height of the beam is restricted to 920. Okay. So hence, you need not to go ahead with this step number two. If he has not been given in the problem, that is 920 millimeter, if this data is missing, if this data is missing, so then, okay, I would have calculated the edge or the depth of the beam using this formula. Did you get my point? So H is equal to 0 0.03 root M to 0 0.04 root M, where M is the total moment excluding sulfate in kilonewton meter. But now you need not to worry. Okay, the H has been given in the problem. That is 920. Fine. Next, type of the section that is for a rectangular section. Preferably, if you consider rectangular section. Okay, if it is a rectangular section, I am going to consider the B as okay, the total depth by 2. Okay, if it is 500, the width will be 250. That's it. Did you get my point? Next, calculating the self weight okay calculating the self weight so how to calculate that you estimate the self weight to be 10 to 20 percent of the load carried so now you need not to okay worry about the self weight acting on the beam because in the problem they have been clearly mentioned the moment due to self weight okay directly they have been given the moment you need not to worry about the self weight okay so hence so this step number four is also skipped. So coming to the step number five, calculate the total moment MT, including the self weight, that is MT, which is equal to, okay, moment due to dead load or plus moment due to, or moment due to self weight plus moment due to imposed load. Also that will be your MT. So now this particular MT also you need not to calculate because Okay, in the problem, they have been clearly mentioned what is MT. So, and up to step number five, step number one to step number five, you need not to worry. Okay, all the data they have been given. Okay, so like this, you need to go ahead with the problem. So, next, coming to the step number six. What is that step number six? Estimate the liver arm. Okay, that is Z. How to estimate that? So they have been given a condition. What is that condition? Consider Z is equal to 0.65 H if MSW is large. That means if MSW is greater than 0.3 MT or the ratio of MSW by MT is greater than 0.3, go with this formula. If MSW is small or MSW by MT is lesser than or equal to 0.3. If the ratio is lesser than or equal to 0.3, then you go ahead with this formula. So in order to go ahead with this formula, first let us check whether it is lesser than or equal to 0.3 or greater than 0.3. That means the ratio MSW by MT. Okay, how to check that? So let me go ahead. So now that's what I've been written. Start with preliminary design. Okay, the values of H and MSW are given. You need not to worry. So next, start with liver arm. So in order to calculate the liver arm, let us go ahead with the, okay, the ratio. So MSW by MT, that is 55 divided by 435. So which will be expressed in percentages as 12.5 percentage. So if you want to express in the decimal, that is MSW is equal to 0.125 MT. So now comparing whatever I've been calculated MSW, which is lesser than 0.3 MT. Okay, it is lesser than 0.3 MT. So hence, I will go with the formula Z is equal to 0.5 into H. Okay, so why have we used this formula? Because the ratio of MSW by MT is lesser than 0.3, which is 0.125. So hence, I will go with this formula. So 0.5 into H, we already know the total depth of the beam is 920, substitute that. So then Z is equal to 460 millimeter. Next, step number two. Okay, so in this step number seven. So what is that step number seven? 
estimate the effective pre-stress that is PE. So what is the meaning of effective pre-stress? So we know from the uh, basic terminology which have been discussed in the loss of pre-stress preferably in the module number two. So effective pre-stress is defined as or pre-stress is defined as the pre-stressing force induced or whatever the pre-stressing force induced. So those pre-stressing force induced, uh, okay, in the pre-stressed concrete beam, okay, we'll come across a loss. So those losses will be encountered due to various phenomenon like shrinkage, creep, okay, elastic deformation loss, okay, creep loss, relaxation loss, friction loss. So because of all these losses, whatever the pre-stressing force or pre-stress that has been induced inside the PSA beam will undergo some of the losses. So after deducting the losses, that means whatever the initial pre-stressing force that has been applied, okay, deducting those losses, okay, the net pre-stress available in order to take care of a PSC beam. Okay, the net pre-stress available in order to take care of the pre-stress beam. So that is called effective pre-stress. Did you get my point? Next, so how to calculate that effective pre-stress? Once again, okay, you need to calculate the effective pre-stress based upon the condition. Okay, so what are those conditions? So once again, you need to check. Okay, that means this condition. So you already know that, okay, MSW by MT is lesser than 0.3. So hence, I'm going to use this formula. So that formula is PE is equal to moment due to imposed load divided by Z. Okay. So let me go ahead with this formula. Okay. So now effective pre since, okay, I've been come across this condition. So this will be the formula. So now how to calculate moment due to imposed load. Okay. So now the total moment is equal to, we already know that. What is total moment? So already been defined, MT which is equal to moment due to self-weight, moment due to self, okay, self-weight. One sec, yeah. Moment due to self-weight plus, okay, moment due to imposed load. Okay, so this will be the total moment. Okay, so now I want moment due to imposed load. So hence, moment due to imposed load is equal to MT minus MSWO. So substitute, you already know what is MT, you already know what is MSWO. Substitute those values. So we'll get 380 kilonewton meter. So after coming to know about moment due to imposed load, so substitute in the above formula. So that is... 318 to the power of 6 divided by 460. You know what is Z, you know what is MIL. So substitute that. And please be careful while substituting because since M, M, the Z is in uh, okay, millimeter, so hence substitute M or moment due to imposed load also in Newton millimeter. So all these things you need to be very careful while substituting. So after substituting, you will get 826 kilonewton. So this will be the effective pre-stress, okay, that will be encountered in the PSC beam. Next, go with the next step, that is area of pre-stressing steel. So that is what? So next step is area of pre-stressing steel. So how to calculate that? So the area of pre-stressing steel will be calculated by using a formula PE divided by FPE. Okay, so let me go ahead. Okay, so already been given that. So if FPE is not known, okay, you need to go ahead with this formula. So let me discuss that. So now AP is equal to PE divided by FPE. So now I've been written an important note here. What is that? If FP is given directly in the problem, that means in this particular problem, FB is given. So please go through that. Okay, please go through that. Okay, you can see that. Okay, the pre-stress at service is equal to 860. So now, if this data is missing, then how to calculate the area of pre-stressing steel? So let me go ahead. Okay, so now if this data is missing, then you need to go ahead with this data. That is, FPE is equal to 0.7 times the characteristic tensile strength of a steel. 
okay so by this you need to, that means you know that characteristic tensile strength of a steel if the data is missing you can consider 1600 newton per millimeter square so when 0 0.7 into 1600 so that will get you the effective pre stress but now you need not to worry because fp is given in the problem so substitute that so now effective pre stress 826 into the power of 3 newton divided by fp 860 newton per millimeter square so you need to be very careful regarding the units so now you got 960 millimeter will be the ab next area of the section okay so that is let me go ahead checking the area of the cross section that means you are going to assume a certain cross sectional area and with that assumption you are going to check whether it is feasible to go ahead Okay, so that's what they have been written. The average stress in concrete at service should not be too high as compared to 50% of the allowable compressive stress. Okay, so if it is so, increase the area of the section, okay, with this formula. So let me go ahead with this formula. So A is equal to PE, that is effective pre-stress divided by 0.5 into FCC allowable. Substitute that, 826 into under the power of 3 divided by 0.5 into 11. So which will get you? A is equal to 1,50,000 millimeter square. So A is equal to 1,50,000 millimeter square. So this will be the cross-sectional area. So now, based on this cross-sectional area, you need to go ahead with a trial section. Why I'm specifying trial section? Because I need to check whether the assumed data, whether the assumed data old good or not in the next step okay because i'm going to assume the things now based on the cross-sectional area after assuming this okay data so i'm going to check whether it is holds good or not so how to assume so see here i've been considered a i section a symmetrical i section i've been considered okay this is the cross section i've been written okay so now in this particular cross section, that is symmetrical I section, I've been considered the top width of the flange is equal to 390, depth is 100. So since it is symmetrical, bottom width also same, 390 and 100. And the web thickness will be, okay, our web width will be 100 millimeter. Okay, and you already been known that, okay, in the problem, they have been clearly highlighted that restrict the total depth of the beam to 920. You cannot go okay more than this or lesser than this they have been okay restricted okay so now based on this symmetrical i section okay i've been marked ct and cb what is that ct and cb that is a neutral axis distance okay from the top compressive fiber and from the bottom fiber so that is what ct and cb okay so that also been marked that is 920 by 2 that is 460 millimeter so now this is the dimension I've been assumed, 390, 100, all those things, except 920, everything I've been assumed. Okay, so now whether the assumed data, okay, will be okay or not, let me check in the next steps. Okay, so next step is geometrical properties. Okay, so next, calculating the cross-sectional area. So already been told, since, are two flanges that is top flange and bottom flange are there that is 2 into 390 by multiply by 100 okay plus okay 720 okay 720 that means 920 minus of 200 okay so this particular distance will be 720 so this distance will be 720 okay so this will be the 720 millimeter next so 720 multiply 100, it is the web dimension, you will get 1,50,000. It means based on the uh, zoom cross-section area, I've been, okay, accommodated the dimensional properties. So now, moment of inertia for that particular section about the centroidal axis. So we already know how to calculate that. So consider it as a total rectangle. So in the total rectangle, you deduct these, okay, two rectangles. Okay, so already been told that, Okay, so consider this as a rectangle, okay, and you please deduct these two edge portions, okay, you need to deduct these edge portions, 
okay so you need you already know what is the depth okay 390 minus 100 okay we'll get you the 290 290 divided by 2 we'll get you this width of the rectangle so since there is a two rectangles you need to detect that so how to go ahead so considering the total rectangle that is 390 into 920 cube by 12 bd cube by 12 okay in that deduct these two rectangles so that is 390 into 920 cube by 12 minus 145 into 720 cube by 12 multiply by because two rectangles so that width is 145 so this width is 145 okay next so after substituting okay we'll get the answer 1.628 10 to the power of 10 millimeter to the power of 4 next you need to calculate the radius of gyration so this is the additional parameter or property you are going to calculate why because you need to go ahead with a current depth that is kt and kb so in order to calculate the current depth from the centroidal axis okay up to the resultant compressive force acting okay you need to calculate the radius of gyration okay so that is so you already know from the, your basic uh, okay strength of material scores that is r square is equal to i by a therefore you know what is moment of inertia you know what is cross sectional area substitute that you will get okay 1 lakh 8500 millimeter square so this will be the radius of gyration next based on this calculate the kern levels so you already know that what is the meaning of kern levels have been defined kern level means calculating kt and kb so first let me define what is the kern so the kern of a section is defined as the region in which the compressive point load that means compressive force may be applied without producing any tensile stresses that means the tensile stresses will be zero okay so that's what i've been discussed so please see here okay see this will be the kt and kb distances and this kb distances will be there from the centroidal axis up to the resultant compressive force which has been acting on the beam did you get my point so these kt and kb are the zones which indicating okay no tensile stresses will be there that is what the okay kern zones did you get my point? So based on that, let me calculate KT and KB, okay, with reference to this. Okay, with reference to this, calculate that, that distance. Okay, KT and KB. How to calculate that? So KT is equal to KB is equal to, because uh, they are equal, because it is a symmetrical section. Okay, so R square divided by CT. Okay, so it differs, then you need to calculate separately. Okay, if CT and CB differs, Neutral axis differs. Now it is symmetrical, and so I am going to calculate KD is equal to K. So substitute everything. What is R square? What is CT? So after substituting, you will get KT is equal to KB is equal to 236 millimeter. Did you get my point? So like this, you need to go ahead with a preliminary design. Okay, so that's what I've been okay did in the preliminary design. Okay, so except that geometrical properties uh, which have not been mentioned, that is step number 10. So everything have been covered. So in preliminary design, step number 1 to 5, from step number 1 to 5, they have been given the data. So from 6 to 9, I have been calculated step by step. Okay, in addition to this, so one more step, I have been calculated the geometrical properties. So this is regarding your preliminary design. So the next is, final design how to go ahead with the final design so as i stated okay you need to check with the two conditions so now the condition is msw is lesser than 0.3 mt so for this you need to go ahead with a, another two step like this okay recomputing or computing okay so this is the check if it is more than 0.3 mt that is a special case you need to go ahead did you get my point? But in this problem, since it is MSW is lesser than 0.3 MT, so I need to go ahead with this step. What is that step? So first calculate the eccentricity to locate the centroid of the pre-stressing steel. Okay, so you already know that why you need to calculate eccentricity. The eccentricity will help you out to locate the centroid of the pre-stressing steel. 
So for that, what will be the formula? So the formula will be MSWO divided by P suffix O plus KB. So using this formula, so let me calculate the eccentricity. Did you get my point? So how to calculate that? Okay, MSWO you know. Okay, P suffix O you need to know. KB you know. So P suffix O you can calculate. So based on this condition. The value of PO can be estimated as follows. The first condition is 90% of the initial applied pre-stress to the pre-tension. That is PA. That means P suffix O for pre-tension member is 0.9 multiplied by PI. So in order to calculate P suffix O, okay, you are going to use 90% of the initial pre-stress, particularly in the case of pre-tension member. So now for Post-tension member, it is PO is equal to PI. So these two things you need to, okay, remember in order to calculate, okay, this P suffix. So now let me go ahead with the problem. So, so now please note down, okay, let me go. Ahead. The step number one is calculating the eccentricity. That is E is equal to MSWO by P suffix O plus KB. So in order to calculate this P suffix O, the formula is already been told AP multiplied by FPO. Now, okay, please note down. So FPO can be calculated since FPO is given in the problem. Okay, no need to use the formula. Okay, so because I've been clearly okay mentioned here. Okay, okay, what is that PO? So hence, okay, you can calculate this PO using this formula because FPO directly they have been given. Okay, so since FPO is directly given in the problem, you need not to worry about this formula. If FPO is not given in the problem, then you need to calculate P suffix O using these two formula based upon pre-tension or post-tension members. Did you get my point? So now you need not to worry because in the problem, they have been clearly mentioned FPO as 1035. You can see here the pre-stress at transfer, okay, is 1035 Newton per millimeter square. So hence, substitute that, okay, substitute that, go ahead with that step, okay. So substitute that, you will get pre-stress force, the initial pre-stressing force is 993.6. So P suffix will represent initial pre-stressing force applied. Next, so after calculating P suffix O, Calculate the eccentricity. So substitute that. You know what is MSWO. You know what is P suffix is initial pre-stress plus KB. Okay, you know that. So substitute everything. You will get eccentricity E is equal to 290 millimeter. So this is the way you are going to calculate the eccentricity. Next. Next step is. Next step is. Recompute the effective pre-stress and the area of the pre-stressing steel. Okay, recomputing, that means whatever the effective pre-stress you have been calculated, okay, so in the previous step, okay, so in the step number seven, in the preliminary design, you are already calculated the effective pre-stress. So with respect to that, okay, I'm going to recompute that, okay, I'm recomputing, that means I'm checking whether the effective pre-stress recomputed matches with the previously calculated effective pre-stress or not and the area of the pre-stressing steel. How to go ahead with, let me see that. So the recomputing the effective pre-stress okay, will be done using this formula. So that is P suffix E is equal to Mt divided by E plus Kt. So that is total moment you already know, eccentricity you know, Kt you know. So now P suffix E is equal to after substituting, we get 827 kilonewton. So after recomputing the effective pre-stress, please compare this effective pre-stress with a previously calculated effective pre-stress. So go to the previously calculated effective pre-stress. So in the preliminary design step number two, I have been computed the effective pre-stress, which is 826. And recomputed one is 827. Almost I can say it is same. And I have been written on comment, since PE above is very close to the previously estimated PE, 
that is in the preliminary design and AP value and P suffix so it is initial pre-stress value and eccentricity remain same. That means whatever I have been calculated that is AP. So please note down. Okay. So that is A calculation. That is AP calculation. Okay. P suffix. Okay. Everything remains same. For example, if this differs, that means, for example, if you get something like 800 or 900, something like this after recomputing, then whatever the recomputed eccentricity will not match with the previously calculated, then you need to recompute all these things. You need to recompute. Okay. I will show you the condition. Okay. I will. Uh, Okay, in the next iteration, it will fail. Okay, we'll show you okay, how to calculate these things. Next, let me place the tendons or the strands in the two ducts because I cannot accommodate properly. Hence, okay, provide two ducts. Okay, the outer dia of each duct is 54 millimeter. Okay, so based upon the dimension of the strands, you are going to make a duct. Okay, so now I've been made a two ducts. Okay, so I've been made a two ducts here. Okay, so like this, uh, they are going to make a two ducts. Okay, so that they can accommodate the strands. Okay, in the ducts. Okay, so let me go ahead with that. So now select, okay, the 10 numbers. Okay, that is seven wire strands. So hence 10 into 99.3, we already know the diameter of the wire. So that is AP is equal to 993 millimeter square. So this is the, okay, the thing you are going to accommodate. Next, check the compressive stress. That means checking the compressive stress in the concrete. Okay, what does that mean? That means whatever the assumed cross-sectional area that has been accommodated, that is 1,50,000 millimeter square. So whether it will be taken care of these particular values or stresses in this condition. So that I am going to check. So hence a transfer. Okay, let me go ahead with this formula. So that is what I've been recomputing. Okay, that check the compressive stress. Okay, with this formula. Okay, so this formula, especially for the transfer condition. So let me go ahead with this formula. So now assumed cross-sectional area that is 1,50,000 should be greater than or equal to this condition. So that is what the condition says. Whatever the cross-sectional area have been assumed should be greater than this condition. So hence, so let me check that. So now P suffix O, you already know that initial precess, that is 993.6 precessing force multiplied by H, total depth 920, FCC allowable. Okay, a transfer is 12.5 multiplied by CT 460. You already know all this data. So after calculating, you will get 1,58,976. That means whatever the cross-sectional area assumed, okay, is lesser than this. Am I right? Because the assumed cross-sectional area, you already know that. You have already been calculated. 1,50,000 millimeter square, which is not greater than Okay, because the condition says it should be greater than or it should be greater than. So, but after calculating, you came to know that whatever the cross-sectional area you have been assumed, okay, is not greater than this value. It is lesser. So, what will you do for that? Okay, let me see. Next, you will also check for service. So, now whatever the cross-sectional area have been assumed, that is 1,50,000 square, should be more than this. So, that's formula also been there. Okay, you can see that formula. Okay, so that is effective pre-stress multiplied by H. Earlier it was initial pre-stress, now it is effective pre-stress. Multiplied by H divided by FCC allowable at service, multiplied by CV. Substitute everything. 827 into the power of 3 into 920 divided by FCC allowable 11 into CB 460. Now you got 4150. That means whatever the cross sectional area being provided, it is almost equal to this value. That means at service, the cross sectional area will be taken care. But at transfer, whatever the cross sectional area assumed will fail because the stress level is okay, 1,58,000. Okay, uh, that means 
whatever the cross sectional area been assumed is not sufficient to take care of these thing hence what you are going to do redesign that means a is not adequate in the case of transfer that's what i've been mentioned condition hence the sections need to be redesigned you get my point for example if this cross sectional area is lesser than 150000 for example 148000 then the condition holds good okay if this okay in this also somewhat i can say it is equal the condition holds good but in this particular case it is more than that particular value so hence i need to redesign how to redesign okay so let me increase the width of the flange so earlier it was 390 i will increase to 435 millimeter and rest of the dimension remain same for this once again calculate so 435 into 100 plus 100 into 720 multiply okay into two so you'll get 159 now the revised cross sectional area is 159000 millimeter square this is the second iteration i'm, I'm doing this is the second iteration so next moment of inertia is equal to the same thing in the total okay rectangle deduct the two rectangles 435 to 290 cube by 12 minus 167.5 into 720 cube by 12 into 2 that is because of two rectangles so the answer will be 1.780 10 to the power of 10 millimeter to the power of 10. same steps i'm repeating this is the second iteration okay because i'm revised the section so hence r square is equal to once again i by a substitute that you will get 1,11,949.68 millimeter square then calculate kt and kb which is r square by ct or cb because both are same substitute that you will get 243.36 millimeter the same thing calculated in the earlier the same thing i have been repeated okay because of the revised section I have been calculated all the parameters. Next, let me go with the final design. Okay, so let me go with the final design, second iteration. So preliminary design have been done. So let me go with the final design, second iteration because the condition has been failed. So now once again, go with the things. So now once again, go with the same things. First, let me calculate the eccentricity. Okay, so let me calculate the same step I'm going to repeat now, the final design. Okay, in order to locate the center. So E is equal to MSW by P suffix O plus KB. So where P suffix O is equal to AP into FPO, you know AP, you know FPO, substitute that 993, substitute that you will get 298.71 millimeter. Okay, so since KB has been changed, so this value will also modify. Next, the second step, okay, what I did, effective priestess calculation, the same step, step I'm repeating here also in the second iteration. That is MT divided by E plus KT. So you know already know what is the total moment, substitute that. You know eccentricity, substitute that. And you know what is the value of KT, substitute that. After substituting everything, you will get the effective priestess which is equal to 802.47 kilonewton. Now please observe. So in the first iteration, so while you are calculating the recomputing the effective pre-stress, you got 826 and I have been specified over there, whatever the re, uh, effective pre-stress you have been recomputed, which holds good because it is matching with the previously calculated effective pre-stress, okay, in the preliminary design. But in this particular case, okay, it is not matching, it differs. So that's what I've been written. Since P is not close to the previously estimate, so hence what I need to do for this? Okay, I need to recalculate the AP, PO, and E values. So once again, area of precessing still is AP is equal to PE divided by FPE. So you know effective pre-stress, you know FP. Substitute that, you will get a revised area of precessing still, which is 933.10 millimeter square. Did you get my point? Okay, because the pre-stressing force has been changed. Next, recomputed eccentricity because of change in the effective pre-stress. MSW by PO plus KB. P suffix O is equal to AP into FPO. 
you know ap you know fp will substitute that you will get p suffix so substitute that everything you will get eccentricity the modified eccentricity value is 300.31 okay so this is what you need to do okay in the last case it was matching in the first iteration but in the second iteration so since p is not matching with the previously calculated effective pre stress you need to recalculate all these things did you get my point next so next the last step that is check the compressive stress now once again so whatever the cross sectional area have been considered should be greater than or equal to this condition okay so let me check so that is 159000 okay the revised cross sectional area should be more than this value so let me substitute you already know p suffix o you know h you know the fcc allowable you know ct so substituting that you will get 154520 but the assumed cross sectional area is how much 159000 okay you already know that 159000 will be the assumed so now okay whatever the cross sectional area have been assumed okay is greater than this particular value hence the condition holds good okay so in the previous case it was not okay okay hence i need to revise the section okay so hence i will this particular condition is holds good next let me check with service condition also so whatever the cross sectional area have been assumed should be more than this value so substitute effective pre stress total depth fcc allowable and cb you will get 1,45,900. once again whatever the cross sectional area been considered or assume is more than this value so once again the condition holds good if once again okay if it fails once again you need to repeat so you need to go with the third iteration okay so like this you need to go ahead in the first iteration itself if this condition holds good i would have not done this particular second iteration so since the condition has been failed so once again i have been redone the things so now okay after calculating this i am i'm going to write the provided area of the cross section is adequate and the stresses are within the allowable limits okay so like this you need to go ahead with the design so i have been explained step by step okay in comparison with the previously discussed uh, preliminary and final design steps so like this you need to go ahead okay pra practice it so you will come to know okay the things okay and this one problem is sufficient to learn the preliminary and final design so in the examination based on the data you need to go ahead because uh, in this particular problem okay especially in the preliminary design i have skipped step number 1 to step number 5 okay directly i have been started with step number 6 because all the datas they have been given in the problem if the datas are missing you need to go ahead with those steps did you get my point so with this okay uh, i can say the preliminary and final design okay will be closed that means uh, uh, this one problem is uh, sufficient to learn the concepts okay so by this okay i can say 3.2 that is preliminary and final design of type 1 member okay will be completed okay so hope you have understood the design problem okay and also by this okay we have completed the module number 3 so in module number 3 i have been discussed the analysis and also the design of type 1 member okay so in the examination you will get a two questions so one is from analysis for 20 marks and one question from design for 20 marks okay so you need to practice it properly in order to get or achieve the full marks okay so hope you have understood the module number 3 okay uh, completely okay practice it properly okay so then you will come to know the things okay whatever have been done in the analysis okay and please practice regarding the rectangular section have been done the flanger sections have been done in analysis how to calculate mu okay especially for flanger section how to go ahead with a xu lesser than df condition or xu greater than df condition so all the varieties of problem have been worked out in analysis and also okay have been worked out one design problem okay based on the type 1 members that is preliminary and final design concept 
okay so by this i am going to end the session so hope you have uh, understood completely the module number 3 okay and keep watching my channel thank you for joining